Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, I'm going to be honest here. I didn't have a video planned for today. Had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, then luckily, uh, Portainer 2.0 came out uh, overnight. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Uh, we're going to take a look at updating uh, from what you should have at 124.1 for your version. Uh, we're going to update that to version 2. Uh, this is a bit of a different process um, in that I've done this in the past but it's different now. And that's why I'm making a separate video for this particular instance. <clears throat> so something to keep in mind here is that you don't need to do this right now. Uh, my understanding is that 1.24.1 uh, will be supported for uh, for like another year or something, uh, kind of somewhere in that time frame anyway. Uh, so you've got time to uh, to make that migration if you need to. Uh, but right now, since it since 2.0 just came out, I want to make a video showing how to get 2.0 set up on your Open Media Vault system. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop here real quick. <clears throat> and here we can see this is the uh, release 2.0, uh, was released seven hours ago. It looks like there were six commits. And there, I want to explain why the, the, the update method that I showed in a previous video won't work in this particular case. Um, and that's because right here, the breaking changes. Uh, we released version 2.0 as portainer slash portainer dash CE. This dash CE is what makes the difference here. <clears throat> Um, so the, this, and they say right here, uh, this is to ensure that auto updaters like Watchtower uh, don't accidentally update this uh, to the new version without uh, some user intervention. So um, if you're using something like Watchtower, I know there's a, a few different uh, softwares or applications or whatever, they will automatically update things. Um, those won't do that in this case. Uh, they may work in the future for, uh, you know, version 2.0.1 or 2.1 or something like that, uh, as long as they keep this portainer dash CE name uh, space in place there. So it also says right here, <clears throat> if you're running any extensions, don't upgrade. They're not ready for it yet. Um, apparently they're just not, I don't know if it's going to be supported later and they're not there. Whatever the case is, if you're running extensions, don't do this yet. Uh, so basically everything else in here, uh, there's lots of good information uh, about this update. Uh, they've actually uh, integrated Kubernetes into that. Uh, we haven't talked about Kubernetes on here. I've done exactly zero research on Kubernetes. Um, so uh, if you're interested in that, it is built into the new version. Um, and they've got a lot of good information in here. Uh, they talk about how they replace Google Analytics in there uh, uh, with Matomo. Um, so yeah, I would definitely take a look uh, at this uh, release sheet so you can get an idea of what's going on here. Um, I will have all of this linked uh, in a blog post linked in the description down below. Okay, so in order to get this installed, what we're gonna do uh, is we're actually going to come over to their installation script here, uh, portainer.io slash installation. And we're going to use these lines or these uh, couple of commands right here in order to do this. Uh, but it's going to throw some errors and that's kind of why I wanna go through this process is to show you uh, what those errors may look like when you're going through this process. Uh, so first things first, I want to come over here. Uh, this is my main home server right here. Uh, this is this is my big system. Uh, this is what my whole network runs on. So I hope it doesn't get screwed up. So uh, down here in the bottom left hand corner, uh, you can see that we're on uh, 124.1 and that there is a new version available. Uh, and just to kind of show you this, if we come into uh, Open Media Vault here, we're on that same server, we're on Bruce Banner here. Uh, if we come down here to Oh gosh, where is it? It's over here. It's under uh, extras. And if we go to Docker uh, and then we go to Portainer and click install, this is the process that we used to use uh, to update uh, from one incremental update to the next. Um, and I just want to show that this isn't going to do anything. Okay, so now that's done. So if I click close and come back over here and refresh, it's going to log me out, which is fine. Uh, and when I do that, hey, look, we're still on version 124.1 and there's still an update available. So now if we come into here, uh, we come into containers uh, and we take a look at portainer here. Um, here we can see that the image is portainer slash portainer. So it seems like we should be able to come in here uh, and based on uh, this information over here, we should be able to change this to portainer slash portainer dash CE. So let's give that a try uh, just so we can see uh, if this does anything. So we're gonna click on deploy the container. We'll say yes. And uh, we'll give this a moment to do its thing. And then we should get a couple of failed error messages up here in the top right hand corner of our screen uh, when it says that it can't do a couple of the things it needs to do. There it is. Can't read property length, unable to create container. 
Okay, so that tells us we can't do it through uh, Open Media Vault. It tells us we can't do it through Portainer. So our next thing to do is actually open up an SSH uh, program. I'm gonna use Putty. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up here and I'm gonna type in uh, Bruce Banner uh, local. Of course, you'll type in whatever your uh, server address is and we'll go ahead and click enter. I'm gonna log in as root and I'm gonna type in my password. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to here. I'm actually gonna drop this into a couple of windows. There we go, we're gonna log in as root. <clears throat> okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, this uh, volume right here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there. I'm gonna click enter. So now it's gone ahead and created uh, this container. The next thing that we're gonna do, we wanna make sure uh, that everything there looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this. Now what I was looking for specifically here is um, all of this up to this part is good. We wanted to make sure that the volume was going to utilize our Portainer data uh, container we just created. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that this Portainer uh, also includes the dash CE in it, and it does. So what I'm gonna do is copy that. I'm going to come over here and just paste it in and click go. All right. <clears throat> So now it's throwing the error message that I mentioned at the beginning that we were gonna get in this case. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna say docker stop, and I'm gonna come up to here, and I'm gonna grab this, and I'm just gonna paste that in there, and I'll click enter. I'm gonna say uh, docker rm, and I'm gonna paste that in again. So now we've gone ahead and uh, stopped and removed portainer. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually just click up on our keyboard a few times until we get to right here. Uh, so that's the command that we tried to run a minute ago that failed because there was already a, a container in place. So now we'll go ahead and run that. And just like that, now if we come over here, oops, let's make this full screen again. Now keep in mind, this is our Bruce Banner server. It says there's a new version available right here. It says 124.1. I'm gonna refresh. All right, so now I'm gonna log back in. It did not change our username or our password or any of that. So now we'll log in. Uh, and now here you can see it just says Portainer. There isn't a version down here. It also doesn't say anything about any updates being available. Uh, so if we come into here, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at our stacks. All of our stacks are still there. Uh, if we come in and look at our containers, um, right here are all of the containers that I've got running. It didn't affect our system at all, except that now we have version two of Portainer up and running on our system. So there you go, guys, that's how easy it is. I know it's a, it's a little different than what we've done in the past, but it is still pretty easy to get uh, Portainer updated from version 124 or 124.1 1, all the way up to version two with just a couple of commands in SSH. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Um, also, if you're interested in this kind of content, uh, where we're talking about home servers and Docker and things like that, uh, definitely get subscribed. Uh, that would be amazing. And uh, if you wanted to go ahead and click the icon to get all notifications, that would be amazing as well. Uh, that's just another little indicator uh, that tells, or that is actually able to tell YouTube that you're interested in my content. So, uh, like I said earlier, all of this will be available in the blog post linked in the description down below. There are also a couple of other links that you might want to take a look at if you're interested in supporting the channel beyond subscribing and liking. Uh, there's a coffee link, it's like a one-time tip jar. Uh, there's also a Patreon link uh, where there are a few different levels at which you can subscribe. The three, five, and ten dollar levels will give you access to my content early when it's available. Uh, the five and ten dollar levels will give you access to a patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out and chat, uh, and it will just be patrons only in there. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.